afternoon, Year 3, and welcome to today's science lesson where we are going to be looking at mirrors. We are going to be looking at different types of mirrors and seeing how the reflection and the image changes depending on the type of mirror that you look at. This time we are continuing on with our unit on light, so we will be continuing on with that. Without further ado, let me share my slides so we can get started. So our what we are learning to understand how mirror type affects the reflected image. By the end of this lesson, we will know that plain mirrors, apologies, I need to put a finger space there, plain mirrors produce an almost exact reflection. Um, we will know that concave mirrors produce larger images and a convex mirrors or convex mirror or convex mirrors make the images smaller and can see a wider area. Sometimes the image may appear upside down. So what we're going to do starting off is we are going to test your knowledge with a quick recap of some of our previously learnt topics and concepts. So get ready to answer the question. You can just shout out the correct answer um, after I've read it. So you can pause the video, shout out the correct answer. OK, here we go. Question number one. What type of object would make the strongest shadow if it blocked a beam of light? Would it be a transparent object, an opaque object or a translucent object? What type of object would make the strongest shadow? Pause the video and answer the question. The answer is an opaque object would make the strongest shadow um, when blocked by a beam of light. Translucent objects do produce shadows, but they're very faint and transparent objects do not produce any shadows at all. Question number two, what name is given to light waves emitted from the sun? Is it A, ultraviolet, B, ultralilac, or C, ultralight? Pause the video to answer the question. The answer is A, ultraviolet. OK, you have ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B rays, which leads me on to question number three. Ultraviolet B rays cause A, skin aging and wrinkling, B, heat rash, or C, sunburn and skin cancer. Pause the video to answer the question. OK, the correct answer was ultraviolet B rays cause sunburn and skin cancer. Ultraviolet A causes skin aging and wrinkling. Question number four. The purpose of vertebrae is to A, help move your body, B, support your body, or C, protect vital organs. Pause the video to answer the question. The correct answer was B, your vertebrae or spine, as it's more commonly known, is there to support your body. That's its main function. And lastly, this is from last year. Um, question number five, animals that only eat meat are called omnivores, A, omnivores, B, herbivores, or C, carnivores? Pause the video to answer that question. The answer is C, animals that eat meat are called carnivores, like carne, which is meat in Spanish. Okay, moving on. So our key vocabulary that we are going to be using this lesson is plain mirror. I'm going to say it, you're going to repeat it. Plain mirror. And a plain mirror is a mirror with a flat surface. So it's completely flat. If you were to touch it, it would just feel flat. Convex mirror, and we're going to do this for convex mirror, like a hump. A convex mirror are mirrors that curve inwards. In fact, why don't we do this for convex mirror? So, sorry, not curve inwards. Convex mirrors are mirrors which curve outwards. So if you were to feel it, you would feel a lump. You would feel a bump. It would feel very spherical in shape. And then we have the opposite of convex, which is concave. And for this, we are going to make our hands. How can we do this? Yeah, why don't we just make it so that our hands curve inwards? Concave mirrors curve inwards. OK, so if you were to touch it, you're, you would feel a dent. You would feel a smooth, circular dent in the mirror. And lastly, reflection. Now, reflection, you've probably all seen your reflection before because you've all looked in, at a mirror. Uh, reflection is the return of light from a surface and it produces an image. And usually the image looks the same as you, except it is reversed. So if you had a spot on your left cheek in the mirror, the spot would appear on your right cheek. OK, so many objects provide a reflection. A mirror is a surface that reflects a clear image. So you can see here we've got a beautifully beautiful, cute kitten and we can see its reflection in the mirror. It's producing a clear image. Now, all light, sorry, all surfaces reflect some light. For us to see a surface or an object, light has to reflect off of it and enter our eyes. The direction that light travels can be drawn using arrows on a straight line. What I want you to do 
is just either using your fingers, you can actually follow the path of the light that it would travel in, or you can, if you want to copy out this image onto a piece of paper, you can and draw the direction in which the light would travel to reflect the uh, image. OK, so can you draw the arrows on this diagram or you can use your finger to follow the direction of light? Pause the video and do that now. So we know that light has to travel from a source because the light is emitted from a source. So my first arrow would be going down and my arrow is going to be going like that. And then it hits an object. Once the light hits the object, it is reflected in a different direction. So now my arrow is going to go all the way into this person's eye. When the light is reflected into our eyes, that is how we are able to see an image. OK, so that was just a quick recap. Now we are learning about mirrors. Mirrors used to be very expensive to make. Mirrors were only seen in wealthy homes, so that's homes of people who had lots of money and were a sign of wealth and power. These people had ancient mirrors and you can see here we've got a picture of an ancient mirror. Now that's very different from today. Mirrors today can be found everywhere in lots of different rooms of people's homes. Most mirrors today are made from a very thin layer of aluminium, okay, which is a type of metal. And on top of that aluminium, they put a sheet of it at the back and then they put some clear glass on top of it. Now, there are many different types of mirrors. The most common type of mirror is a plain mirror. Plain mirrors. Now, you probably all have plain mirrors in your house. If you were to look in your bathroom, you might see a plain mirror. In your bedroom, you might see a plain mirror. The most familiar type of mirror is a plain mirror, which has a completely flat surface. So if you can find a mirror in your house and you touch it, run your hand down it, and if it's flat, then it is a plain mirror. Plain mirrors are commonly made out of flat, polished piece of glass with a shiny metal backing, um, such as silver or aluminium. The most common one is aluminium. Now, light passes through the transparent glass of a mirror and the back of the glass is coated with a special silver paint. When the light hits the surface, it bounces back through the glass and a clear image is formed. An image in a mirror appears to be reversed. And I've said this to you. For example, if you look in a mirror and raise your right hand, the mirror image appears to raise your left hand. So why don't you try that? If you can go and find a mirror and lift up one hand, lift up your right hand and see what the reflection, so the image that's in the mirror, see if it raises a different hand than what you're raising. OK, because it will appear as if your left hand is being raised, even though you're raising your right hand because it reverses it. So that's what plain mirrors are. Moving on, your first task, OK, is to now if you have a printer at home, you can print off the sheet. If you don't, what I'm going to do is make this slightly bigger and you can use the actual computer, use the image on the computer to um, reflect it. So what you're going to do is you're going to place a mirror on this vertical line down the middle, so on this line in the center. And you're going to place your mirror there. You are going to reflect the image of this writing, which is back to front. And you can interpret the secret message. I'm going to model it for you. So let me show you exactly what I mean. It's very exciting because we've got some secret messages here that need to be deciphered. So here I have a message and I've got my mirror ready now. Don't know why, but these mirrors are very, very scratchy. And what I'm going to do, Daisy, I'm dropping my pen on the floor, is I am going to get my mirror and I'm going to put it, place my mirror on the vertical line here. So you can see this vertical line? I'm going to place it there. And then I'm going to try and read the message. Oh, would you look at that? It says, Miss Williams is the best. That's the secret message. Well, it must be true if that's what the secret message said. So I'm just going to copy it out. Miss Williams is the best. And let me just double check what punctuation was at the end of it. I'm going to use my mirror again. Oh, it was an exclamation mark. Wow, Miss Williams is the best. I have to agree with that. So let's go back to the task sheet, you can print it off and if you haven't got a printer, then what you need to do is I'm just going to make this bigger for you and you are just going to place your mirror. Let's get rid of that. 
So if you just place your mirror on the line and then you can reflect the image, you can either copy it out or you can just read out what it says. OK, pause the video so that you can do that now. Fantastic. Hopefully you were able to decipher all the secret messages. Moving on. So, so far we know we've got plain mirrors which are flat and the image in them appear, appears um, almost exactly the same. It simply reverses it. Next we have convex mirrors. And remember convex mirrors, if you were to touch a convex mirror, it would feel like a lump. You would feel a dome because the mirror curves outwards. Now some mirrors are made with curved glass. These mirrors are called convex mirrors. Convex mirrors curve outward like a dome. They make objects appear reversed and smaller than their actual size, and it can give you a wider view of things behind you. So you can see this person is not actually this small, but she's looking in a convex mirror and she appears much smaller, and it's quite good because it gives you a wider view of the things behind you. Look, she can see all the different things behind her because it makes her appear much smaller. Now, there are many different examples of convex mirrors. Here we have a convex mirror on a motorcycle or a moped. OK, here you've got a convex mirror, which are commonly used on side mirrors of cars and vehicles. And it's good because it makes whatever's behind them look a lot bigger. So you can see cars coming in your direction or vehicles behind you. Again, you've got a convex mirror, which is on a wall. You might notice in train stations, tube stations, any underground station and shops like convenience stores or corner shops, you'll notice they have convex mirrors so they can see a larger view of the shop. So who's inside it, what they're doing, and that helps reduce theft. Now, you're thinking, I don't have a convex mirror. How can I possibly look at it? Well, actually, you can. Using the back of a metal spoon, take a look at yourself and what do you notice about your reflection? I'm going to share my screen, uh, stop sharing my screen so you can see. Here I'm using the back of my spoon. Remember, you want to feel the curved part of your spoon because that curved part is going to act as a convex mirror. Now, this isn't a mirror, but because it's a reflective metallic surface, we can use it as a mirror. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at myself and I can see that I, my face looks a lot smaller. If I look at the back of, now you're not going to be able to see this, but if I hold a pen up, maybe you can see if I do it like this. If I hold this pen up to, I don't think you can see that. Let's try this remote. If I hold this remote up to my spoon, which is going to act as a convex mirror, you can see that it looks very small in comparison. It's not actually that small. And you can see a lot more of the classroom behind it. So the image appears smaller and you can see a lot more of the room behind you. So I want you to try that home using the back of a spoon as your convex mirror. OK, fantastic. Now, moving on, the last mirror type is concave mirrors. Now, concave mirrors curve inwards like a bowl. If you were to feel it, you would feel that it scoops inwards. OK, it almost feels like a ditch or a curved inwards. And these are called concave mirrors. Now, if you were to look at them at a distance, so if I looked really closely in a concave mirror, I, my face would appear upside down. So it, it can return the image upside down. But if you move the concave mirror further away from yourself, okay, the object or the person in the image appears much larger than their actual size. Now here you can see a dentist is using a concave mirror to look at the person's teeth. And that's because when you go to the dentist, your teeth are very, very small. A concave mirror helps magnify the teeth and see any cavities or any areas that need to be filled. So I'm gonna show you some different examples of concave mirrors. Microscopes use concave mirrors because it makes the image appear much larger. As I said, dentists use these tools. Um, telescopes use concave mirrors. Lots of beauty mirrors or vanity mirrors that you have at home. So maybe your, um, if you have a sister or if you have um, uh, your mum or any adult at home that's um, a woman or male actually, because males can also have these mirrors. Um, but these are usually do, used for doing your makeup. These mirrors can magnify your image. So they make you appear a lot bigger than what you actually are. And that's because they're a concave mirror. Now, again, this time using the same spoon, if you look at the spoon and you lose the curved part of the spoon, so using the front of the spoon, this person you can see is looking in uh, his spoon and it's, a it's acting as a concave mirror. His image is appearing 
upside down and it's much bigger than what it usually is. Now, if I looked at my spoon, which I'm going to do now, and I'm looking at the inside part of it because this is curved inwards and you should be able to feel it and it should feel a dent, a ditch, and I'm using that. Now, if I look really closely, I can see that my face is actually upside down. And if I move it away further on a concave mirror, you'd actually be able to see that you look a lot larger than what you actually are in real life. Okay, so have a go and try that at home using a metal spoon. Or you can try and see if you actually have a concave mirror at home. Fantastic, let's go back to our slides. So, I've got a task for you now. You've got to imagine that you are visiting a hall of mirrors. Very, very funny. Because as you're walking inside, and you're walking through a hall of mirrors, you notice that your reflection looks very different in each of the mirrors. Your reflection may appear bigger, smaller, wider, longer, shorter, or your actual size. So look, you can see this person, his image has made his head very big and his body very short. Here he looks very, very long. And here he looks, it's made his arm big and his tummy big. And the same with these kids. This mirror has made the bedroom look very, very small. Now, you're enjoying your time in the Hall of Mirrors and you've come out now and Miss Williams has asked you, what type of mirrors did you look at? So, your task is to do two things. First thing you've got to do is identify the type of mirror that you are looking at. And I've printed a sheet here to help you, so you can use this task sheet. If you don't have the task sheet, then what you will need to do is just get a spare piece of paper, just write number one, look at the image that I've got here, then look number two, look at the image, number three, look at the image and identify it. So first thing you've got to do is identify the mirror type that would be used to produce this reflected image. So if the image appears the same, then what type of mirror would that be? If my image looks a lot smaller, what type of mirror would I be using? Here, my image looks a lot larger than what it actually is, and sometimes it appears upside down if I'm looking at close range. What type of mirror would that be? Then you need to describe how would it affect your reflected image. So if I was to look inside this type of mirror, once I've identified it, what would my reflection look like? And I'm going to model that really quickly for you. So I'm just going to share my screen again. And I'm going to make this up, so please don't copy me because I'm making it up. I'm going to say number one, and here I'm just going to use a plain mirror. So looking at this plain mirror, okay, if I was to show the remote in the plain mirror, it looks pretty much exactly the same as what it would look like in real life. It's, it's actual size. So number one, I'm just going to write plain mirror and I've got to imagine what my reflection would look like if I was to use a plain mirror so I would say my reflection would appear the same or I'm going to say actual size. However, the image would be reversed. OK, so my reflection would appear the same or actual size. However, the image would be reversed, comma, if I were to look at a plain mirror. We'll stop, okay? So that's exactly what you've got to do. First thing is just identify what type of mirror it is, and then you're going to give um, a brief summary of what you would look like, what your reflection would look like if you were to look inside this type of mirror. Okay, but it's going to change depending on each mirror. So let me go back to 
the slide and you can pause the video and complete that. Once you've done that, upload your work onto Seesaw for your teachers to see. I hope you enjoyed that lesson looking at different types of mirrors. Here you've got a word bank to help you. Convex, concave, plain, stretch, wide and narrow, smaller, larger, shrunken. Use those words to help you complete your task. Once you've done that, then upload it onto Seesaw for your teachers to see and Mark can get back to you. All right, year three, I will see you in the next science lesson. Bye.